what's going on youtube welcome back to my channel today is an exciting day for me after one month of working i finally finished my diy 60 volt e-bike if you watch the part one then you will know that i built this bike 100 percent from scratch i bought the frame in china and i started working on it so if you haven't seen part one go check that one out and then come back to this or you can simply watch this and then go back to part one so i brought it here to the park to show you guys what the bike is how it looks the finished product um all the features on the bike and just show it off to you guys i am so excited i've built a lot of bikes i built a lot of e-bikes and this is without a doubt my absolute favorite e-bike the power zero to 30 is so quick it gets to like 30 that fast and then it just keeps going but there are so many things i love about this bike uh just look at it look at the shape the lights man this thing is absolutely beautiful and it's so functional so now i'm gonna get behind the camera and show you guys the rest of the features i'll give you a better look up close on what this bike looks like and what it's capable of so i bought this abs plastic sheet that i'm gonna be converting well i'm gonna cut it up into something like this and that's what's gonna go on the side of that bike before I show you guys an up close view of the bike all put together, I want to show you guys the process like I promised from part one. I'm going to show you guys how I did everything including the meter storage and all that other stuff. So stay tuned. Now if you don't care to see how I did the bike or you don't care to watch you know, the things that I do, feel free to skip to the end, well towards the end where you can see the finished product. All right, so this is the part that's gonna cover this middle part right here. To make this, I first had to make this right here, that way I'm not wasting a bunch of ABS. And then I cut it up and then I use a heat gun to bend it, the edges. Now, it's not perfect, especially if you're looking at it from a side. But what I'm probably gonna do is I'm gonna use heat to try and make this better this is my first time working with ABS so not bad right so I finally finished building an enclosure for the battery and just a middle storage I've been working on this since yesterday it is 12 p.m. almost 1 I haven't slept yet I haven't slept since yesterday because I've been building this and I was so committed to finishing but it took a whole lot longer than I was hoping this side I'm gonna stencil it doesn't look as good as this side but it is cleaner so I'm just gonna stencil it and write my name or my YouTube or whatever and this side looks more rugged like military ish style because of this uh right here but basically this is how i access the middle storage this is the battery and i'm gonna place something here and this is where i'm gonna keep my tools and stuff like that so yeah oh and this here is how i access the key to unlock the battery on the other side is to charge it it is pretty tight i made it that way that way when i'm riding it doesn't flip open well on and off charging port and you gotta push it back in love it I use heat 
to kind of mold it around it but there's not gonna be any shaking when I'm riding like everything is secure I bolted everything into onto the frame onto the frame uh, and then I use a uh, rivets to pretty much hold it secure it like this thing is, is really and then you can even see here I bolted it down and in the top I also did the same thing but it's ah, it's the best that I can do I'll get better at doing stuff like this but I'm proud of man I'm proud of this because I've been working on this for so fucking long here's something that I do quite often to get an idea of how the bike would look before I actually do it so I go to the actual picture I edit and I go into uh, actual text and I add stickers now in the sticker you can see I have this bag as an option so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna carry uh, adjust the size this is the actual bag that's gonna be going up here I ordered it a while back but I haven't received it yet but it's gonna look something like this it's hard for me to really get the exact sizing and because of the orientation in which the picture was taken but just to get an idea this is what it looks like and lately I've been thinking maybe I should cover this portion uh, up so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to save this picture, uh, save as copy, and this is the thing that I'm going to be using to uh, cover it. Now where did I get this picture from? I just went on AliExpress and I screenshotted the picture. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to use this feature to select it. You see how I selected that picture and I'm going to save it as sticker. So save as sticker. Done. So now it's saved under my stickers. Next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back to that picture that I just edited. So now that I have this picture, I'm gonna edit again. And I'm gonna select stickers. And now I have this image there. So I'm gonna size it. Oh, okay. Now I have to flip it or edit it perfect so now I can resize it let me hope, zoom in the picture resize it uh, see if I can get a perfect fit no it's not perfect fit but it would sort of work so this is kind of like get, give me an idea of what it would look like it's not perfect but it will give a pretty good idea so now I just save it and now this is kinda what the bike would look like if I decided to add this part right here now if I were gonna if I were gonna have if I were to add this part I'm not gonna add the one for Super 73 because I don't want anything saying Super 73 on it because this is not a 73 this is a custom built e-bike so I would probably make my own uh, panel. But this allows me to kind of get an idea of what it would look like. And what do you guys think? Do you guys think I should get something that covers this part up? But this is essentially an idea of how the bike would look when it's 100% completed. So for the back part, which is gonna go somewhat like this. I'm using this machine right here. That's how I was able to cut this perfect angles without having to break one side. So I just finally received this bag that I ordered over a month ago. The bike is almost done. Just needed this to go right here. Ooh. Just needed that to go right there. I don't know if it's gonna fit though.
So to install the bag, I cut a little bit of the inside and I cut a wood uh, out of that right there and the plywood and I put it at the base of the bag. That way I can screw it. And then I put a, actually I put a ABS plastic above it. That way I can screw it onto the frame. Now what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna uh, put this back in there and I thought about using adhesive, but I figured I'm not gonna do that just in case I wanna remove it easily. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna duct tape inside. But yeah, so far. So at this point, there's pretty much only one thing left to do and that's to put this on the bike. This is gonna be a way for me to charge my phone using this USB-C and two additional ports for, you know, for accessories if I wanna charge uh, anything else. Maybe maybe a phone that's not compatible with this or maybe like a action camera, you know, my Insta360 X4 or whatever. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add this one right here. So I'm gonna drill a hole and it's gonna be plugged in right there. To power this, this is a 12 uh, volt. To power this, I'm using a step-down converter. Like I showed you earlier, I have two step-down converters. One is for the lights, and the other one is gonna be this. It's gonna be for this. If you wanna see how to do that step-down converter, how to wire the step-down converter, check out my previous video on how to wire LED to e-bike or something like that. The, the method to wire the step-down converter works with pretty much anything. A perfect hole is made. Now time to put this in there. Okay, so now this is being put in place perfectly safe and if i need to charge my phone i just open this up connect my usb and bring it up but to turn it on let me turn on my battery as you can see it comes right on 12 volt now if i don't want it running all the time i can just turn it off and to prevent water from getting inside I just put it right here now to show you that this really works I'm gonna connect a USB device and charge something turn it on plug it in phone is charging phone is charging and unlike most um, Unlike most USB-C that comes with on the batteries for most e-bikes, the USB-C is slow. This one is a super fast charger. So this will charge your phone in literally no time. And I can adjust the voltage on, uh, on the converter if I don't want this drawing too much power. Not only that, this thing has a built-in fuse, so it will prevent something uh, from happening to the phone or to the battery which is great. Now, not only can I use a USB-C, I can actually use a regular USB like I was saying earlier. So this is great. I can literally charge anything on this. Incredible, I love it. So now the bike is 100% complete. Man, where do I even start? But I guess I'm gonna start by turning it on and showing you guys what it looks like. So this is not like a traditional e-bike where you press and hold this to turn it on. You can do that, but this has NFC. So basically to turn it on, I tap on the screen and it comes right on. Just like that, it comes on. To turn it off, I tap on it and it goes off. Without this, nobody can turn on the bike. I mean, you can manually turn it on here, but then it's going to ask for a password, which means if you don't know the password, you can't ride away. And this is so much faster. Just tapping, just tapping on. Here are my control lights. Let me turn it back on. 
So this are my turn signals. I get an indication and then I also get a notification. I mean, I, I, I get a sequential light over here and I can turn on both of them at the same time. So kind of have like a hazard. Not a lot of e-bikes can do that. And turn it off. Now, you guys saw earlier that I have some LEDs, right? This is how I turn on my LEDs. I press and hold this. And they come on. So I can turn on my LEDs from here. And these are the LEDs that I like to have as a running lights. I typically have this on daytime running light. I can actually go in my phone and change the colors of this light or even turn off this one and have this one's running. This entire light kit is running off the main battery. Once again, if you want to know how to wire your LEDs to run off the main battery, check out my previous video on how to wire LEDs. Now, these things are very bright. They look incredible at nighttime. But guess what? I even have more lights. As you can tell here, this one is not on. To turn it on, I just come here. And now I have an indication that lights are on. Now my tail light is on. And then I have more LEDs here. This thing, this daytime running lights are so bright, I rarely, rarely turn on this one. Even before I completed the bike, I've been riding around and I rarely turn on this one. But you can never have too much lights for your own safety. Now let me turn it off. And I also have brake lights. So squeeze the trigger, you can see that. Brake lights, it all works. Now let me turn off the light and show you the rest of the bike. To turn it off, press and hold this. I get a notification here and it goes right off. Okay, for my brakes, I have zoom brakes. They are four piston hydraulic brakes and they are 203s. So for something that goes incredibly fast, you need something, you need a good stopping power. So there's 203 uh, the diameters of uh, brake rotors and four pistons. They stop me quite well. The next thing I have here, oh, and I like the fact that they are red. I chose red because I wanted to have red accents everywhere. You can see my shocks are red. I mean, my rear shocks are red, calipers red, tail light red, you know, air fork red, you know, just a little bit of red everywhere. Even my name tag, King Kohler, red. This thing was so hard to do, but I'll tell you guys more about it later on. So the next thing is my uh, fork. These are adjustable air forks. Uh, they are close. They're not the most expensive ones. They were only about 170, but they are pretty comfortable. I think that a lot of people that get uncomfortable with shocks and forks are people that are usually people that weigh typically more than 250. I weigh 190, but with all my gears, the tools, the bag, my backpack, I always travel with my laptop and I carry a bunch of stuff with me. So if I were to weigh myself and everything that I carry with me, I'm typically riding about 220 pounds on top of the bike. So you can imagine you need something that that works pretty well for your uh, for your body. And this shocks right here, like I said, you can unscrew this and you can add hair to it so you get this, uh, the cushion you want. I personally love a very soft ride. If I want to speed up, then I just crank the knob to make it a little bit harder. But for the most part, I'm always I'm usually cruising, so I don't need to uh, ha I don't need to tighten it up. But yeah, that's for the uh, front shocks. And as you can see, the LEDs, once again, there's a video on how to do this. So don't worry, guys, if, you, if you're wondering, oh, how do I do this? Well, there's a video that I made on how to do this. And then for the rear shock, this rear shock actually came with the bike. Initially, when I unboxed it, I was like, man, this shocks are trash. But man, 
since riding on this this is a literally perfect i love the ride it's so comfortable if you are somebody that weighs more than 250 and you have a bunch of accessories then this may not work you might actually need something better but for lighter people especially if you yourself as an individual weigh less than you know 220 this i think would be perfect for you um man there's so much that i did the seat came with the bike i mean it came with the uh, frame the next thing i want to show you guys is this bag right here because i actually haven't really had the chance to really really show you guys this bag i bought this bike i mean, I, bought, I bought this bag on aliexpress and what made me get this bag is because one day i was watching uh, a youtube video and i saw a bike called uh man it, i think it's called fisker black warrior or something like that and it had this, ba uh, this bag on it i was like man i gotta get this bag it looks like a gas tank but it is so functional it, it, it gives it that retro look but it is absolutely functional so i got it because of the look and also because it has a combination lock i'm gonna put in my password and open it up and show you guys Okay, so now that I unlock it, I've got a lot of stuff in this bag. Like, I got gloves, I have a gimbal, I have tripods, uh, I have my wallet. Bro, I even have my, my personal weapon in here, my gun. I have so many things. This thing, you can imagine, is full of space. This is my hand in comparison. This thing carries a ton of space. And I'm so glad I got this bag. I absolutely love it. Love it. So I'm going to close the bag. And then. Oh, I forgot to mention. On this control right here, there is a horn. And the headlight that I got, which also is from AliExpress. A lot of stuff that I got on this bike uh, on AliExpress. It has a horn. And for the horn to work, you just simply, it's not the most pleasing sound, but it, it gets pretty loud. Uh, pretty, pretty loud. I've already showed you guys the compartment, but once again, here's a closer look to the compartment. You know, I have my tool kit and my battery and stuff in here. So I have to do this with one hand. On the side here, once again, is how I remove the batteries. These are my pedals. I mean, my foot pegs. This can come off. One, the reason why I have, I chose this one specifically is because let's say I put my bike, I go riding, I go grocery shopping, which is something I do a lot. And... I leave my bike not only do I have the wheel lock I put the wheel lock which is an alarm I have the actual alarm on the bike I turn it on and I take the foot pedals I take it with me that way somebody comes close to the bike they don't see a pedal they immediately get discouraged but if for some reason they still want to get to the e-bike there's an alarm now earlier i showed you guys that i have a combination i have a bag with combination lock a person can easily just put a knife and cut it open right here's the thing if my alarm is on the moment somebody touches the bag the alarm goes off so that is something that can you know distract the person or deter the person the thing is i never really leave my bike for long anyways but the truth is there is no lock or security that you can put on a bike that a person who is determined to get it cannot get cannot break through it's just a matter of time any lock can be broken it's simply a matter of time you have to think 
there are people who rob banks. Is your bike more secure than a bank? Highly unlikely. And people break into banks all the time. So as long as you don't leave your e-bike in places or your regular bicycles in general in, in places left alone for too long, you should be fine with you know some of the locks that are typically found on Amazon. So once again, foot pedals. Um, the next thing I want to talk about is this mirrors. Initially, I was trying to decide what kind of mirror I wanted to go with because the last bike that I had had a mirror kind of like this, but it was smaller and it was so hard for me to see. So I was kind of discouraged from going with a mirror again. So one of my buddies who has an e-bike with a camera on it told me, hey, you should try this e-bike cameras. So I literally bought three of them, but the field of view were just too wide for me. And plus for me to mount the camera, I would have to put it somewhere here, which is kind of hard. So I ended up going with this mirror right here, which is Kimoto. There's a bunch of different kinds on Amazon that you can get, but these things are solid. The view is incredible. You can see everything up close. It's not like the other mirrors where everything is kind of far away. This thing is pretty wide and it gives you an up close view of the uh, oncoming traffic behind you. So I highly recommend this mirror. You can tilt it up and down. This part right here moves side to side up and down. This is without a doubt the best mirror that you can get for your e-bike. It's actually a motorcycle mirror. So for an e-bike, this will work perfectly. The mod guards are something that I got off AliExpress. I'm going to link everything below. This outlet right here, I showed you guys earlier how I installed it and this is how it works. So basically I open this tab and I turn it on and it's on. Turn it off and it's off. And I just close this back up, you know, it's waterproof. This is so hard to do, but I got it done. And oh, someone in the comment section asked me if I had torque arms. I do. And I replied saying I do. I have two torque arms actually. I left this here because just in case I wanted to remove the motor to install this mod guard because I actually got this one late. But anyway, I'm gonna cut it because I was able to put it on without having to take without having to take the wheel off. But this torque arm right here. Is by green uh, by green uh, tech or something like that. I highly recommend this. But this is the one that I put on this side, and then I added another torque arm on this side. Usually people put people put one of these on the on the e bikes and they're good to go. But I added that one and this one just for an overkill because when you have an e bike that can go ridiculously fast you don't want to risk the motor ripping apart this part right here your dropouts and speaking of this area unfortunately this is the only crank wheel that i could put on this bike i have one that was bigger that i i, I wanted to put on the bike that way i can pedal around 30 miles or something like that but it, the chain just kept falling off. No matter what I did, I could not get the chain to stay on. So I ended up going with this uh, pedal right here. And also, I didn't want to. I didn't want to put uh, gear shifters on it. If I had put gear shifters, I could have used a bigger, uh, you know, sprocket or something, whatever they call them. But I really, what, one thing I noticed is that on my other bike, which has seven speed, I rarely change gears. And I always pedal. I pedal every day, but I rarely change gears. So I figured, why not just go with single speed here? And I was determined to have a single speed. So that meant that I had to go with a smaller, uh, I don't know what this thing is called. Is it sprocket? 
whatever it's called, I have to go with this one right here because it has the chain guard. The bigger ones don't have chain guards, so the wheel, the chain kept falling off. So that's why I ended up going with this. The thing that sucks about this one is I can't pedal past 20 miles. After 20 miles, the pedal just becomes useless. But when the pedal, when the pot, when the bike is completely off, I, I'm actually able to pedal. I've tried pedaling just to see how it, it feels, and it feels good to pedal with no power. My other e-bike is very hard to pedal with no power, but for, for some reason, this one I can pedal with no power. I think it's because the seat is far back and my legs stretch a bit more, so I have an easier time pedaling this bike. Pedaling this bike actually feels good. It's slow, you know, pedaling with no, with no power is slow, but you know, if it does feel good to, to pedal. Now I have my PAS, my pedal assist. The interesting thing is I actually turned off my P, uh, pedal assist on the display. So my pedal assist is connected and everything, but I disabled it in the display because the bike is just too fast for the pedal assist to work. And once again, I lose pedaling power at 20 miles per hour. So this is not a bike that I'm gonna be pedaling much anyways. I really was hoping I'd be able to pedal it a bit, you know, but because I couldn't get a bigger sprocket with a with a change guard with a chain guard, this is what I'm stuck with. But overall, guys, what do you guys think of this bike? Is it dope? Do you guys like it? Is there something I should change on this bike? Let me show you the next thing that I did. Some of the stuff that I'm going to say are things that I've already mentioned in previous slides while I was building the bike. But this here is uh, I decided to put this there just because of the look, right? I bought this mesh on Amazon and I cut it up to fit into this. This is the ABS. The same ABS that I used to build this is what is on this. Now, here's the cool part about this one right here. I can easily take it off by pushing on it and pulling on it. It's magnetic. So it does not change the look. It does not change. There's no screws or anything on there. I'm sorry for the train, but as you guys can see, the uh, Gorilla Tape and screws, holes, with a, with a magnet holds this thing in place. This Each of these magnets can hold 25 pounds. So when riding, this thing is not coming off at all. Even just to take it off, I have a hard time sometimes. It's like, I gotta like really pull on it. So it's not coming off while riding. And it's very easy to put it back on. And just like that, it is on. This is the power of ABS plastic. You can pretty much make anything out of it. All I did, like even this one, I cut it up, you know, just like I showed in the previous videos, I cut it up using my heat gun to mold it and turn it into what you guys see. But, oh, and on this fork, it has this sticky tape, which I thought about removing, but I actually like the fact that it reflects colors and it changes colors, especially at nighttime. Uh, this mesh right here for cable management, I got it on Amazon, link in the description. Everything, that I can think of for this bike would be linked in the description. If there's anything that I'm missing or forgetting, please let me know in the comment section. If you want to know where I got it from, whatever it is, just let me know in the comment section. You know, hey, what's up, fam? Yeah. I built it. Yeah. This is a front view. Anyways, that is it guys. Thank you guys for watching. Um, the next video that I'm going to do is I'm going to do um, either a top speed test or a way to, I'm going to show you guys how to secure your e-bikes. I'm talking about like wheel locks, alarms, and the top tools that you need to have on you whenever you have a bike, especially e-bike that are heavy. There are some incredible tools that I've found that are ridiculously cheap that you might not even know about that you can have on your bike. But 
if I have the time, then I might do a top speed run on it first. The reason why I'm not doing a top speed run today is because I'm thinking about changing this display. I'm thinking about changing it even though I don't really want to change it because of this NFC. I'm thinking about changing it. If I don't change it by the end of the week, then I'm going to do a top speed. But if I do change it, then I'm going to do a top speed on the next display. Same controller, but next display. I also plan on doing a shunt mod in the future on this bike. Maybe, yeah, I think I will do a shunt mod. I don't know. All I know is thank you guys for watching. Subscribe, stay tuned for more content. If you have any question, put it in the description. I mean, put it in the comment section. Catch you guys in the next one. Peace.